to my second part of uh, Hitch from Blues Plus Power Equals Destiny. Now today we're going to be going through the main guitar solo sections uh, which will incorporate an awful lot of legato technique, um, some rapid trill picking and um, a lot of fun rocking ideas. So stick with me and uh, here's the first segment. For all those guitarists who let's say want to set up a backing track to practice a solo along, uh, the best progression you can actually put together um, if you want to put that same rhythm guitar section, it goes a little bit like this. Now what I was doing there was basically chopping away through an eighth note pattern. Uh, the progression is four bars long in duration, and the chords I'm playing are... Right, now let's take you through some of the segments within the solo. Um, the predominant movement that's going through at the start is a 16th note motion uh, using legato technique, uh, which um, can be done in two different ways actually. Um, you can either base it um, across the D string and the A string, or simply pivot over a single string line. And the actual idea goes a little bit like this. Now the idea you saw there is what classical terms would call a mordant, uh, where we take one particular note, let's say, let's say the F sharp here, and what we'd do is we would pivot between the F sharp, the next interval going over the side of it, which would be G, and the following interval behind it, which would be the E. And because we're in the key of E minor, we're actually playing off the supertonic, which is the second, Going to the third, back to the roots, and you get an idea a little bit like this. Counting one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Now taking that idea, uh, once again that was only based across the two strings. You can do this on a single string idea as well, which looks a little bit like this. And as I said, both ideas are completely valid. So depending on which one you feel more comfortable with. Anyway, next idea, starting from obviously from this position, we then pivot up, hold tone, and our shape changes a little bit like this. As you can see, it's a very similar shape to what I have here, but what I do is I take the first finger and I drop it down a semitone, so actually I've got a tone split, it's like tone, tone, tone between all three fingers. Now if I wanted to paste that onto, let's say, uh, a single string, um, it still formulates the same sort of pattern, but it kind of goes in reverse. So rather than being, let's say, a tone split between first, third and fourth, it now, because I've shifted to the next interval, goes first, second and fourth, which sounds a little like this. And then, when I get into my next part of my scale, um, I end up playing a rapid succession of 16th note triplets. What I do is I rotate um, a symmetrical pattern, once again, of time and time. So it's split between, let's say, first, second, and fourth finger. Now, if you look at my pecking hat, I'm not actually pecking that much. I really am just doing a downstroke on an eighth note motion. So I kind of go one, two, three, four, and three, and the rotation of my hand is putting in the triplet. So it sounds one ear, one ear, two ear, two ear, three ear, three ear, four ear, four ear. A little bit like this. And then I take that motion and I put it up through a symmetrical shape, a uh, closest shape at this point. Looks a little bit like um, a mixolydian. 
but I'm still roughly keeping in with the, um, the key of E minor, which is the Aeolian mode. Uh, it should sound a little bit like this. And um, next idea, taking a similar theme of the Mordant, which I based in the lower range of the bass strings, now pitting it across the G and the B string. And you get something a little bit like this. Once I start to add the wah effect, which should sound a little bit like this, this um, influence came from none other than um, Greg McIntosh from Paradise Lost. Um, it seems a little strange that obviously I'm incorporating more of a, um, a goth metal band um, guitarist into, let's say, classic rock fodder. But um, what I love about Greg McIntosh is that he's um, very, very hooky when it comes to his guitar lines and his use of wah quite reminiscent of players like Kurt Hammett um, in the 90s, started using a lot of wah around the Black Album, especially on the load period. And um, it made Legato have a real edge, a real attack to it. So um, rather than actually having a straight... <laughs> put the wah on top of that. <laughs> give you a real top end, especially on that one, two, three, four, especially when you come to those top ends. <laughs> So you can really hear that quarter note motion of one, two, three, four coming through when I scoop that wire up to the treble end. <laughs> and I do this through um, predominantly most of the solo of this section. Um, actually, the whole solo is all in wire, um, but you really, really do notice it through the lower end. So what I'll do is I play through, let's say, the octave range of the uh, the bass notes, and then go into the treble just to kind of give you an idea of how it should sound. <laughs> Now the scoop on the wire is a little bit different when you go into the 6th note triplet, so rather than actually quacking on the... I actually could have very steady scoop that actually travels through the entire bar, so it'd be equivalent of that, say, going for more of a... Um, semi breathe a whole note tone. So I should start with my bass. A little bit like an aeroplane, sounds like a little bit like a filter effect. So you'd actually go from your bass and then go all the way to your treble. So it gives that little effect. Um, that's what I like to call the technicolor yawn effect. The next idea, um, shifting shapes, I'm now around the 12th position, and um, I keep a very symmetrical pattern, which is simply starts off uh, going through 12, 13, and 15. And within the actual progression, the bass is now dropped down to an F. Uh, which implies a flat second within the actual key. And the scale that would come closest to that would either be a Locrian or it would be a Phrygian. The one I've actually opted for is a hybrid version of the Locrian, which is predominantly associated as a jazz progression. <laughs> Get here. The slight inflection of the blue scale was there because I'm really emphasizing the tritone there, and then stepping into the fifth. Which sounds pretty cool. Um, so it's more of a hybrid scale, really, of the Locrian and the blues. And once again, pitting around in 16th note triplet uh, should go a little bit like this. And ending with a big bend at the end. Now the true lick goes a little bit like this. So I'm kind of stepping through a whole bar's worth and towards the end just ending with a big unison bend going across uh, the E octave.